you that after 25 years, we've lost 40% of our barrel, and that's why older Scotch whiskey can be so expensive. You can probably wait for a five years to sell it. You've lost 40% of the product in the way, and you make no money on it in that time. So when you're heading 30, 40, 50 years old, that's why they're super expensive, because there's not much left by that point. And you're heading for 30, 40, 50 years old, that's why they're super expensive, because there's not much left by that point. So we're going to head on um, to the second part. This whole collection was collected by this man just here on the wall, Mr. Clive Dees. He was the CEO of a Brazilian pharmaceutical company. He worked from the bottom of this company right up to CEO and he collected all these bottles by himself. He started with these six just here. His friends brought them back from a trip to Scotland, said to Clive, these are quite rare. If you're going to open them, please open them with people that will appreciate them. Clive decided, nope, not going to open them and I'm going to collect another 3,300 odd bottles and not open any. Now we do like to stress that none are open. You may see some with a bit missing here and there. That is the angel's share, naturally evaporating away the whiskey. It's all to do with how good the seal is on the top of the bottle. We lose over 150 million bottles a year due to the angels. They drink a lot of our whiskey up there. Um, but yeah, so they, they, this evaporation is mainly happening in the casks, but it does happen in the bottles up. Um, Scottish whisky was not really that popular, especially when you compare it to something like Irish whisky. The introduction of blends allowed us to make more consistent products. Uh, we could make them quicker, we could make them on a bigger scale, and it caused our industry to really boom, and now we are a little bit higher up on the sales, uh, quite a bit higher up in sales than something like Irish um, whisky. So blends are super, super important to our industry. They make over 90% of what we sell at blend of Christmas. Without blends, there would be hardly any style of chimney, basically. Um, basically means when you are drying your barley, so you basically to dry your barley, you, you've wet it first to trick your barley into thinking it's spring, it will convert the starch inside it into sugar to use as an energy source to sprout. However, we want that sugar, so we have to basically stop the growing process before it actually does sprout, so that it's just like little packets of sugar at this point, because it's already converted. So basically to do that, you'll just blast it with either hot air, if you want it to be uh, unheated or unsmoky, or you throw heat on the fire if you want it to be a smoky whiskey. Heat is a young form of coal, it's compressed organic matter, it's sort of black and you throw it on the fire and gives off a thick smoke. And if you use that to dry your barley, then you'll have a smoky whiskey. But basically, when you're doing this drying process, if you had a standard sort of chimney, it just sort of sucked all the all the air and things out of the, out the room. This causes everything to circulate inside, and that means that you more evenly and more efficiently dry your barley. And if you can dry it more efficiently and evenly, then you can turn it over quicker, you can put more barley down, you can make more whiskey plants on a still, or a coffee still, they're all the same thing. Um, the, this is what makes green whiskey. Now green whiskey is what I said, are the, the other big whiskey that we make here. We have single malts, which are made in pot stills that look like onions, and made copper. And you have one of these, which are really, really tall. These will be like the size of this building, if not bigger, uh, in real scale. And these will can basically continuously distill your whiskey up to well over 90%. Um, inside each of the pots that should be there, labeled one to 10, there is a smell. You just unscrew the lid, you take the smell, you write down what you think it is. Now, um, if you're bang on when we get to the answers, I'll give you two marks. If you're close, I'll give you one. The whole point of this isn't, you know, just to sort of wake up your noses. I'm then going to go through where you might actually get these smells coming through in your whiskey. So it's not magic where vanilla comes from. As we said, it tends to come from that American white oak, Quercus alba, it has more vanillin in the wood, which gives you vanilla, etc. So we'll go through where in the process. First is to look at the color. If your whiskey is lighter in color, a paler yellow. That can indicate it was maturing in one of those ex-bourbon casks from America, or maybe a bit younger. Again, those bourbon casks give less colour, so it may be a little bit younger, or from one of the bourbon casks. Next step is to look at the legs. You swirl it around, and then stop and look at the teardrops that run, uh, should run down the side. They are the legs of your whiskey. It'll tell you what the body is like. If you have thin, quick-moving legs, there's quite a lot of them, they form quickly. You may have a lighter-bodied whiskey thick and slow, and you may have a heavier bodied whiskey. This implies it has more oils in it, may clench your palate longer, may have a bit of a thicker mouthfeel. Again, if it is heavier bodied, may be coming from one of those shorter stills, or if it's lighter bodied, it could be coming from one of the taller stills that we talked about. Does it mean that it's got more alcohol? No, no. So. so it's just an indication um, of the sort of texture and body weight in your mouth and your, on your palate. 
There is an indication of alcohol, but we'll get to that later, and I will show you that when we get to it. Um, before we get to the, the important steps though, because there are five steps, as we said, colour, body, but then the three last ones are the important ones, and that's taste, um, nose, the taste and the fish. Um, but I'm going to tell you what's here first. So we are starting on something interesting. Um, this is not a single malt whiskey. This is not a blended whiskey. This is not a blended malt whiskey that we talked about with Monkey Shoulder. This is a single grain whiskey. So what this is, is basically whiskey that's came off of one of those stills, but I've not added any single malt to it. Now, basically what I said before was that that whiskey tends to be quite light and not have much to it. So why, why, would, uh, why would you want to drink that? Because if you take that and you put it into a bourbon cask or a sherry cask, because it's quite neutral, it soaks up all of the flavour from the cask. So if you put it in a bourbon cask, you can get these beautiful vanillas, exotic fruit notes, all this kind of stuff. You put it in a sherry cask, it's super rich and spicy. Leave a single grain whiskey in a sherry cask for long enough and it's almost like a rum. It's like super, it's just taken all of that wine by that point. It's just so dense compared to a single malt, which will hold up a little bit better against it. But they can be really, really nice. Now this one is very difficult to explain on a masterclass. And the reason for that is this is 100% malted barley. Now a single malt is 100% malted barley. But the difference between this is because this has went through one of those stills, it's classed as a single grain whiskey, not as a single malt whiskey. So you can actually drink this, which is the Loch Lomond single grain, next to Loch Lomond single malt, and they taste totally different. And it's all down to the still shape again, because this has came off a continuous still, and their single malt will have came off a pot still. Now, another thing I want to point out, single and grain are not related. So yes, this is 100% malted barley, but this could be, if this was 50-50, it would still be a single grain. Single just means one distillery. The grain means it's grain whiskey. Same with single malt. Single means one distillery. Malt means all malted barley. So the single part is not related to the next part, which is very confusing to talk about, especially when this is all malted barley and it's from the same distillery that does single malts. It's very hard to get your heads around, I do understand that. But we'll go through the steps with this one. So first, looking at the colour. Nice and light, as we explained, this has been matured in bourbon cast. Spin around, look at the legs. You'd expect the legs to be reasonably thin because um, it is a grain whiskey. Now, barley does hold up a little better than most, but you can see I've got lots and lots of little, little legs sort of forming here, quite, quite a few. It's hard to have a comparison before you get to some of the other ones, but this is quite light. Um, but we'll get to the most important step. So get your nose in there. And for me, it's quite sweet. It, it, it does have these interesting notes coming out. Or something to it. Mango, maybe. It's very sweet. Can, um, someone that doesn't drink whiskey, I can't get that. I can't. You won't. As I said, it's, it's, it's a case of you, there's no reference point Pear. to go back to, so it's hard to say. I get a different fruit every time. Yeah, and by the way, again, we all have different palates. Anything <coughs> I say, you don't have to get what I get. You can be getting something totally different, and that's absolutely fine. Doesn't Just because I get something doesn't mean I'm right. A lot of people like will smell and go, I don't get that. Yeah. You might not get that. That's not, that doesn't mean I'm getting it. Okay. But we'll give it a go. Now, when we drink whiskey here in Scotland, we do like to say slangiva. It means to good health. Slangiva. Don't neck it down in one like a shot of tequila. Take a very small <laughs> sip and slowly let it go down. Okay? But since we're here, slangiva. Slangiva. Sort of slosh it around on your palate. Slowly. That's how it works. It doesn't mean everything in it's 12, it means the youngest thing in it's 12, and that's how it works for any age statement. You know, if you buy any 12 year old scotch, youngest thing in it is 12. Single malt, blend, and that works throughout for everything. Um, for this one, this will see a little bit more um, rich than the first one. It might be a little bit uh, more dense on the nose. You can see it's a much darker <coughs> in colour. Spin it around, have a look, see if you've got any legs coming down on this one. For me, they are taking a little bit longer to come, but a little bit stickier. It's but yeah, I get more of yeah. a sweeter caramelly note on this one. Oh, yeah. A little vanilla and toffee, yeah, exactly. If you want, nose the first one, go back to this one, even if there's not much left in your first one, and you will notice the differences between these two. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's caramelly. Mm -hmm. It's nice. But yeah, it's that more dense toffee caramel vanilla note over that first one. Mm. But we'll give it a like go, this. guys. Slange of ass, what do you think? Slange of ass. 
I think it's a little bit more, it's a little thicker on the palate as well, a bit of a thicker mouthfeel compared to the first one. Um, and obviously this is from Glenlivet. So Glenlivet, the biggest producer um, of single malt, the best seller is still Glenfiddich, but Glenlivet are right behind them. Just so you're aware, Glen is not a guy that owns everything in Scotland, it just means Valley. So, um, we're the first people to get a license to make whiskey, and they therefore sued everyone else for the name Glenlivet. Now they are the Glenlivet, and you know, that's why they have... Well, that's why it's the... That, that's why it's the... And if you go in the collection, you can still see things that say Glenlivet on them that aren't from this distillery, because there were so many called Glenlivet in this time. Um, things like Tom and Tell, uh, which you can buy, still have Tom and Tell of Glenlivet, um, but they're known as Tom and Tell, because Dick Glenlivet is now Glenlivet. So, um, went through, that was quite a, a, a dense explanation. The Nadura just means the natural, so this is natural or past strength. And this has been done in all or also last kind of thing that really sort of holds people to it. Some people, smoky whiskey is not for them. What I like to say is that even if you're not a fan of smoky whiskey, it is such a punchy flavor that you'll never forget. And what I mean by that is if you only have smoky whiskey with good people at good times, the next thing you go back to that, even if it's the last thing you have of the night before you shake hands and they, and they leave, you, next thing you try it, you're like, oh, I remember the last time I had this. I was with this person, we were here, because it just is so heavily associated with memory. My uncle only drinks smoky whiskey when he's sailing, and if you give him a smoky whiskey outside of that, he just talks about the sea for 40 minutes. Because as soon as he drinks it, as soon as he smells it, he's on his boat. He's on his boat, oh, I remember I had this, I was out of storm. And you know, it's, just, it's instantly, he's back on his ship, right? So it's just a case of, even if you're not a fan of smoky whiskey, if you have one in your house, and you just have a tiny bit, even if you hate it and you shut it down, whatever, when you're, if you just do that with good people, then that smell isn't now that weird sort of smoke that comes through, it's the smell of good people and the Funny tiny chari uh, character with their, the, with their I whiskey. I kind of like tequila does when you first... Yeah, yeah it, does, it does kick you in the face a little like, bit. Like tequila, like you smell yeah. tequila. Yeah. Mm. Well, that, I think it smells kind of like cherries, actually. 65.2. Like, but you can get single malt okay. scent in that. One of our bars, yeah. half of our scent. Yeah, I think it smells good. I think it smells good as well. It is quite nice. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe let you try it, but I just don't want to flash. Um, so, for the Lefroig though, we will try this one. Slangeba, guys. Last time tonight. Slangeba. Or this morning. Smoky. I normally do these tours at night, so... Good. Good job. You can drink on the job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can drink on the Masterclass in the morning and the Platinum Tour at night. So I was on the late shift last night doing that one, and then I went to bed, woke up, and I'm on the early shift doing this one. <laughs> <laughs> but now you can't drive. No, I can't. Luckily, I don't live too far away. I'm at the top of the mile, so I just. And I can't bring any sweetness. And that smoke plus the sweetness. Well, it's not my favorite. So we went through the um, morning master class was, for the scotch whiskey experience she was, won the quiz i won the quiz because by two points my nose is smart <laughs> apparently it's really funny you they said they said that it was like actually like i didn't just win it i like got like 90%. higher than most people ever get here so that was cool F 14 points and people usually get yeah. six he said that nobody's gotten higher than 16 and i got 14 so pretty cool. Anyways, um, we're in the shop now, upstairs, so there's so much whiskey and scotch here. It's freaking ridiculous, and we liked most of it that we tried. Um, no, I liked most of it too. I just didn't like the smoky one, and he said, don't just say it's smoky because there's different kinds of smoke. But I'm going to just say it was smoky because I don't like the smoky ones. I'm like, I don't want to eat smoke unless it's in meat. <laughs> so. But he did make a good point though. If you do drink it, um, it's one of those that reminds you of the last time you had it. Yeah, because it's such a shocking flavor. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Well, let's look around. Look at 
state of me. I'm soaked through. Still, I must complain. Fresh water is, after all, a vital ingredient in the art of making Scotch whiskey. Aqua vita, or in Gaelic, muscovia. Another vital ingredient is barley, which is steeped in water and brought here to the malting house to germinate. The malt man tongues the barley, allowing it to breathe and sprout. No smell that. That, my friends, is the sweet smell of malted barley being dried here in the kiln. More specifically, it's the smell of burning peat. Now, peat is a young form of coal, and another factor in determining a whiskey's unique final flavor. Ooh, is it just me? Oh, it's yourself. I was just having a wee breather. A bit like the malt here in the malt store, you might say. It's, um, waiting. It's riding its time, building up its strength a wee bit. Oh, well, that's it. Onwards and upwards. Well, downwards anyway. <laughs> This is the mash tun, a container where we mix together the purest Scottish water with our grist from the mill. The sugar in the mixture is dissolved, producing a sweet liquid known as wort. The wort is then cooled, ready for the next stage. The residue left in the mash tun can be used to make animal feed. The wort might not look that special, but let me assure you, this will become pure liquid gold. <laughs> 